So what's it like driving the Nimbus One? Woo! And now I'm getting the hang of it. That's coming right up. Hey everyone, my name is Rick Cordero. Welcome to Run Playback, where we help you with video and tech tips to lead a more efficient and affordable lifestyle. Let's be creative and save money at the same time. In this video, we'll be visiting Nimbus, a Michigan-based electric vehicle startup that produces the Nimbus One, a three-wheeled EV that's not quite a motorbike and not quite a car, but something that's a hybrid of the two. We'll talk about their experience, check out the Nimbus One prototype, and take it out for a test drive. Want to know what the future of micro-mobility looks like? Stick around to find out. So we're here in Flint, Michigan at the Kettering University GM Mobility Research Center, an autonomous vehicle testing track which features an S-curve, elevation, surface changes, straightaways, and is available for year-round 24-hour testing. So let's get to it. My name is Liang. I'm the founder and CEO of Nimbus. Climate change was one of the things that I felt like was going to be most important for society. One of the biggest contributors to um, climate change from transportation, a lot of it was from cars. And cars are incredibly inefficient. You know, we're using these like massive machines to carry relatively small people. A lot of times when you're in cities, you actually don't really use cars to their full extent at all. I think we've all had that experience. We're driving in the city, we're stuck in traffic, and then we look over and there's a person, you know, faster than us. This one is what we believe to be the most practical urban vehicle. It's a vehicle that's just large enough for kind of most of your everyday needs. You have a full enclosure around you, um, so you're protected. There's an airbag as well. There's also a ADAS system. One of the biggest pain points of having a car in a city is needing to park it. And so the vehicle being so compact, both from a width and, and length perspective, allows the vehicle to park very easily in spots that just no way a car could fit. So the width of it is about the same as a medium to large size motorcycle. In order to achieve the narrow width of the vehicle, you have to tilt the vehicle um, to achieve balance. But besides being functional, the tilting is also really fun. Um, you get the sensation of kind of flying a little bit. The tilting is all is all in the front here. So between the steering wheel and, and the suspension, that's where all the all the magic happens. Is yeah. this, um, I guess, display or some something yep. that tells us what the car is doing? Yeah, exactly. So it's it's an LED matrix that is used for uh, signals, so turn signals, as well as um, you can display any sort of custom um, you know information like state of charge or when the vehicle is going to be used for rentals it can display whether the vehicle is available or not there is a drl here which is not turned on day daylight running light and then the, the main headlights are down here and then this this port opens as well which has the charger in here so you can plug it into a um, level two charger or you can actually plug it into a wall you can actually fully charge the vehicle and get 94 miles of range just overnight on a, on a household plug if you look around the world I think there's actually more motorcycles produced each year than there are cars. But unfortunately, they can be difficult to use. You know, one of the things that was like very important for us was to have a vehicle that anybody can get in and start to drive it right away and feel comfortable, uh, which a motorcycle you cannot do. You know, it takes years of experience to be able to drive one uh, well. The swooping shape is uh, aerodynamic. You also want enough headroom for both the driver and the passenger. Or if you don't have a passenger, you can also use this as a cargo area to store, you know, grocery or a gym bag, you know, whatever, amp, you know, packages. And then there's actually also a compartment in the back behind this pad that can be used to store extra stuff that you can lock. Here is a uh, computer we have on the on the vehicle that you can use to. Uh, look at your speed and control uh, HVAC. So there's heating that comes standard and then uh, there's gonna be optional AC as well. So this folds down, this, so there's a shelf here. You can put luggage here, extra luggage. Cooler. Cooler, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So the design in the back was, was you know, again, wanting to achieve a aesthetic that was um, kind of a little bit futuristic and, and cool. So three wheels is, lighter than four wheels. When you have a vehicle that's light, it's gonna be more efficient. Because the vehicle has three wheels and there's a steering wheel and there's a seat and there's a seat belt, the vehicle is classified as a auto cycle in a lot of states. The vehicle basically 
conforms to motorcycle safety standards, but you don't need a motorcycle license to drive one. And so that just makes it much faster to get onto the market, but also makes the vehicle accessible to, to a lot of people. If I was driving behind this thing, I would, I would be like, what, what year is this, you know? <laughs> There's also a backup camera here too. The door panels aren't on yet, but how will these open up? You know, obviously a big benefit of having a vehicle that's compact is you want to be able to park it close to other cars. And if you had huge doors, it would just defeat the whole purpose of that, right? So what we did is we designed the doors so that they kind of slide open, but it also kind of swings a little bit. Sling door, yeah, combination of a slide and, and swing. And so, um, the door only opens about this wide, but it also gets out of the way so that you can step out um, pretty comfortably. How is this powered? Where, where do you store the battery? Yeah, so the batteries are stored underneath the seat. One of the biggest challenges with using an EV in, in a city is that there's nowhere to charge the vehicles. And so the way we've solved this is by um, using swappable batteries. And to swap them out, you just lift this cover open and then you uh, you slide the batteries out like this and you pull pull them out so wow. you can take them into your apartment or whatever to, to charge them so each one is about 24 25 pounds and so two of them will get you uh, around 40 almost 50 miles of range and there's four so in total it's 94 miles of range two yep. on each side one, one, two on each side exactly oh okay yeah. very cool i am excited to try this out and test ride it cool all right let's do it So now we are gonna test ride the Nimbus one. I'm super excited. First, we gotta put on the seat belt. Safety first. Usually I have a helmet on when I do this kind of stuff. Okay, so brake and throttle, I think I got it. All right. Whoa. <laughs> oh, that's the throttle, that's the brake, okay. All right, here we go. <laughs> I'm taking it real slow, real slow, I don't wanna like, mess up this uh, really pretty electric vehicle. Kind of got to get used to the leaning here, but that's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, I'm going uphill. <laughs> the leaning is, is, is interesting. I got to kind of get used to it. it. It doesn't quite feel like you're gonna tip over, but you know, you just got to have confidence in the sensors. And uh, I'm gonna go down this hill, okay. Go slow. All right, here we go. <laughs> this is so wild. No idea how to do this. <laughs> All right. I'm getting used to it. I'm getting used to it. It feels like a car and an electric bike and almost like a scooter. There might be a way to maybe program the responsiveness of the turning. Uh, I think right now, you know, you kind of have to ease into it. Because right now, now I'm getting used to it, so I can kind of predict uh, what the wheels are gonna do. Whereas before, you know, I think my, my movements maybe were not really coordinated. But now I'm getting used to how to turn this thing. Let's maybe go to this part of the track over here, go to the parking lot. Take it. <laughs> Take it a little bit wide open. Man, I'm digging it, man. You just gotta gotta have faith in the turn. Gotta have faith in the lean. Faith in the lean right here. Yeah, I feel that lean. I feel that lean. <laughs> Someone in the road. Get out of the way! <laughs> Now I'm getting the hang of it. Now I'm getting the hang of it. I dig this. I really do. I mean, it's it's like riding a bike with the steering wheel, right? It's like riding a bike with a steering wheel. That's that's the best way I can describe it. Look at me. I'm I'm a professional already. I'm a professional uh, auto cycle pilot. <laughs> 
I got it. Dude, you gotta have faith in the lean. You gotta have faith in the lean. It's not you leaning, it is the sensors. And you just have to have that confidence that the sensors will take care of you. I do wanna like, I do wanna like full throttle it over here. Let's see. Getting the hang of it. <laughs> Go faster. Okay. Go faster. Go faster. All right. Woo! <laughs> I've seen the future, and the future is the Nimbus one. This is super fun. <laughs> I, I honestly, you know, I, I could, I could whip it much faster, but I'm, I'm going to be nice. Don't want to, don't want to ruin it for anyone. One of the questions that we have is, can a second person really fit back here? They can, and Liang will demonstrate for us how that works. So I'm, uh, I'm about five eight. About five eight. Five eight. Yep. 175 pounds. Okay. Oh, okay. There you go, because this space here means that your your legs are sort of like straddling the sides as opposed to hitting the back of the seat. How far can I? You can go all the way back. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Look at that. Where are we going to put our groceries? In the... <laughs> In the luggage rack in the back. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So make sure you don't forget your, uh, you know, your basket or your cooler or whatever else you need to uh, to put on the back if you have two passengers. There's no space wasted, I think, in this design. So we're planning for um, Q3 of next year for launch. It's uh, nine thousand nine hundred eighty dollars to buy or you can rent one for $200. And when you rent one, the uh, registration and insurance will be taken care of for you. And unlike a car lease where you're locked in for three years, it's just, you know, month to month. So it's, it's very flexible. If this is something that's, you know, a product that's interesting to, to you, then uh, our pre-orders are open. As one of the growing number of EV startups that are based in Michigan, Nimbus has a lot of potential to bridge the gap between an e-bike and an electric car. It's obvious that Nimbus has spent a lot of time on not only environmentally friendly specs, but also on practicality and thoughtful creative design. The Nimbus one is definitely something we would consider as an alternative to a second family car or as an all-weather option, which e-bikes aren't really meant for. Shout out to Li Hang and the entire team for supporting the flourishing micro-mobility community with the Nimbus One EV. If you want to dive into more video and tech tips, click the links on the side and remember to like and subscribe so we can help you find tech deals that fit your lifestyle. We'll see you guys in the next video.